I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. We're going to go over pivots inside Maya and how you can manipulate them to achieve different results that will speed up your workflow and allow you to work much easier inside of Autodesk Maya. Make sure you watch all the way through the video as we're going to go over the basics of pivots, snapping pivots, and some cool examples that will really get your mind thinking on how to maximize your use of pivots. The first thing you need to know about pivots is that every object you create inside of Maya automatically comes with a pivot in the center of that object. So if I make a sphere, you can see that in my move tool, I have this square. This square is where the X, Y, and Z axis meet at the particular point. That is my pivot. If I hit E to activate my rotation tool, you can see a small gray square. That is also the representation of my pivot. If I hit R to activate my scale tool, you can see there is a cube in that same location. That is also my pivot. So you can see that my pivot location affects my move, rotate, and scale tools. So the pivot really determines how I'm going to interact with my object in a scene. But inside of Maya, you can change where your pivot is. In order to do this, you need to use the keyboard shortcut that changes the manipulator to the pivot manipulator. On a PC, you have to press the D key to activate it. If you press D once, it activates it and leaves it active until you press it again. You can do the same thing with the insert button. Another way is that you can hold the D key. If you're holding the key, then it becomes active and stays active until you let go of the D key. If you're on a Mac, then you have to either press home if you have a large keyboard, but if you don't have the large keyboard and you have the short version of the keyboard, you have to hit FN and the left arrow key to activate the pivot manipulator. You know that the pivot manipulator is active because your manipulator icon is going to completely change. It's going to have the arrows from the move tool and the spheres from the rotation tool. And in the center where your pivot is, it's gonna be a square with a little circle that kind of looks like a target. That's how you know you're in your pivot manipulator mode. So now that you've got it active, you can move it on any axis. So I'm gonna select mine and move it around. So when I wanna deactivate, I'm just gonna press key. And if I use my rotate tool, you can see that my sphere is now rotating based off of that pivot point. The same is true for my move tool and my scale tool. This is very powerful and allows you to easily achieve different things inside of Maya. Another cool thing about manipulating the pivot is that you can use the snap tools along with it. So you can easily snap the pivot to the grid, to vertices, to edges, curves, other objects, and so much more. Now I'm gonna show you a couple examples of just how powerful it is to move the manipulator around. One thing I do very often is move my pivot to the very base of an object. So I'm gonna activate my pivot and snap it to the bottom vertex of the sphere. This is great, especially when scaling objects because now it's going to scale based at the bottom of the object and grow more naturally from the ground plane. This is much better than having the pivot in the center because if you want to grow an object but you have the pivot in the center, you're going to have to scale it and move it to try to get that contact with the ground plane and you're never going to get it 100% accurate. So by putting that pivot right at the base of the object, you don't have to move it, you can just freely scale it, and you know that it's always going to maintain its contact. Now, if I want to reset my pivot and put it back at the center, you can easily achieve this. All you have to do is select your object and go to Modify Center Pivot. It automatically moves that pivot back to the center location of your object. Another example that I'm going to show you is orbiting. I'm going to duplicate my sphere and move the duplicate over to the side. Now, I want to snap the pivot of that new sphere to the center of the first sphere. But if I try to snap right now, it's a little hard to tell if I'm really snapping to the center of the object because there's nothing there. So to guarantee that I'm snapping to the center of another object, I'm going to select that first object and go to Display, Transform Display, Local Rotation Axis. And right now, you really can't see anything. But if I hit 4 on my keyboard and go into wireframe mode, you can see there's a small manipulator that looks like it appeared at the center of that object. That is indicating where my pivot is for that object. Since my pivot for that object is in the center, 
I can see it very clearly right there. And I can now select my second sphere and snap my pivot to that manipulator that we're displaying. So now I know that I perfectly got my pivot from my second sphere attached to the center point of my first sphere. So now if I rotate, you can see it's rotating perfectly around that first sphere. So I've created a perfect orbit. This next example is going to take things a bit further by combining several pivot manipulations to create a particular animation much easier than if you never manipulated the pivots at all. So the example I'm going to create is this one right here. So you can see that I've got two spheres perfectly rotating around this cylinder while this cylinder is also moving. So to achieve this, I'm first going to create the long thin cylinder. Now for each sphere, I'm going to move the pivot points to the base of each sphere because I need to make sure that they are in perfect contact with that cylinder. Once I have this, I can snap the sphere to the top surface edge of that cylinder. I can do this to both spheres because I want them right at that base. In order to do this, I can either activate my snapping to curves or if you hold down the V key, it activates any type of snapping. So if you hold down the V key, you middle mouse click and try to drag on the on the edge of that cylinder, you'll see it snap right on that surface of that cylinder. Now, if I turn on the local rotation axis of the cylinder, you can see that it is centered because I've never changed the pivot of the cylinder. So if I activate my pivot for the first sphere, I can snap it directly to that cylinder's rotation pivot. So now if I rotate, it rotates perfectly around that cylinder. Another method I can do to achieve the same rotation but not move my pivot so drastically far from my sphere is I can just move my pivot down on one axis. So the way to do this is by following these steps. First, activate your pivot. Second, move that pivot only on the one axis that you want to snap to. So I'm going to grab this green arrow, which is my Y axis, and just nudge it up and down a little bit. Once I've done that, I can finally middle mouse and click and snap to that center pivot of the cylinder. As you can see, even though I'm clicking in the center, it is only snapping in the Y direction because I only moved the Y direction before snapping. That lets Maya know that I only want to snap on that one axis. If you wanted to snap on all axes afterwards, you'd have to move that pivot in all axes and then do a snapping again. Now we can still take this one step further by taking advantage of our outliner and parenting techniques. This goes a little bit into rigging, the very, very basics of rigging, but you can see how powerful it is. What we're going to do is that we're going to grab these two spheres and we're going to group them together by pressing Control G. And if you open your outliner here, you can see that a group node appeared and inside of that group node, there's my two spheres. By default, the group node's manipulator pivot is at the origin of the scene. So I can go to modify center pivot if I wanted to center that pivot in between the two spheres, or I can move that pivot to the center of the cylinder, which is what I want to achieve. Now that we have that, if I rotate the group, you can see now that both spheres are rotating because they're taking the transforms of the node above it, which happens to be the group node. So the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to parent this group node to the cylinder. As soon as I do that, you can see that I can move my cylinder around, I can rotate my group node, and I can rotate each sphere individually. Now I can easily achieve a wide variety of animations without having to worry about the contact of my spheres with the cylinder. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff our social media pages, and our Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video.